Media queries have a somewhat confusing syntax, so we need to sort out the parts of the syntax that are important to mobile-first responsive design. Then we will use the CSS Media Query Selector and apply Media Queries to our practice file to create a mobile-first responsive design approach. This is our practice file opened in an editor. You see we already have the meta tag for the viewport added in, and we have the base styles and selectors added in as document level CSS. Media queries can be added in using the CSS at media query selector. And the at media selector's basic job is to create a test, and one of the tests is for the type of media. There are various types. The one we'll be using is for the screen. Media queries are a test, so they contain some logic operators. These are the list. You have and and comma and not and only. The comma is a separated list. And so we will be using the only one so that we can support legacy browsers that will ignore applying our media queries without running the actual test. Once you have detected the media type, you can then test for features for that media type. The media features you can use depend on the media type that you selected. They may apply to more than one media type or they may be restricted to a specific media type. To use a media feature, you use its name. Some can be prefixed with a min dash or a max dash to express greater than or equal to or less than or equal to constraints. Then you follow the name with a colon and then something to express a value. The values can be a simple number, or they can be a keyword. They can be a number with a measurement value, or they can be something unusual such as aspect ratio has two numbers separated by a slash. And some can just use the name of the keyword to detect if it exists. For our example, we'll be testing for the minimum width, so we'll use the width feature prefix with the min dash and then a number of pixels for the screen width we're looking for. We need to include parentheses around the feature name value pairs. And then finally, we need to connect this with our media only screen with the logic and keyword. And then we have our first media query. To save some time typing, we have the snippets.txt file that has the code that we want to use. And line six through 11 has our first media query selector. So we'll copy that and we'll go over to the practice file and we'll paste that in at the end of the styles. And you can see we have some comments here to give us an idea of what the media query is about. And media queries when you're using the at media selector require some curly braces to find a block and in that block we'll put in additional selectors to either override or add to the current CSS. So the first one we're going to do, we can copy from the snippets file, and that is on line 15, the body selector. And we have a background color. We're going to override the existing background color. So we'll paste that here on line 42. Now we can go over to Firefox and observe the change. And so we'll refresh the window, and we can see that our color has been applied to the background. And if we look at this in the Firefox responsive design view, and we'll go over to the preset for 320 and refresh the page, we can see that our color is applied. And if we nudge the width a little bit, we can see that there is a change at 320 pixels. And that will continue as far out as we can go with the current screen. A quick look at the CSS again, you can see that the base body background property was set on line 16. And then the media query that follows that overrides the body background property when the minimum width of the screen is detected to be 320 or greater. Now we can add in our next media query selector for our next width. So if we go over to the snippets file, we'll see that we have that set up for 768. So that's lines 18 through 22. We'll copy those back in the practice file, and we'll add that after our first media query selector. And we'll also change the body background, and we can copy that from the snippets file from line 26. And we will put that on line 47 in the practice file. 
If we go back into Firefox, we can refresh the page and then we can take a look at some different presets. We'll go up to the 768 preset and we can see that the background color changed. If we take the handle on the right hand side and just nudge it down a bit, we can see that's our breakpoint. And we can see the different properties being set as we reduce the width down to 320 and below. Now we can add the last breakpoint. So over in the snippets file, if we look at lines 30 through 34, we have the last breakpoint. And we'll copy that and put that into the practice file at the bottom. And we can see as we go up the screen sizes, we keep overriding previous property settings. And so again, we'll just do the body so we can see the actual work happening. So we'll go back over to the snippets file, line 37, copy the body selector, paste that on line 52 of the practice file. And we will go over to Firefox to the responsive view, refresh the page, and we'll take a look at some presets. There's 320 by 480. And then we go up to the 768 by 1024. We see a color change for the background. And then our last one, we could probably pick 1280 by 600 and we can now see the reddish color background and if we drag the handle on the right hand side down as we hit these various breakpoints we can actually see the background color changing until we get all the way back to the base background color. Using media queries to change the background color is interesting but not likely what we'll mostly do when we're designing for responsive design. Typically, we'll change the styling of our document so that it's best suited for the user using their device. So we'll start off with the header H1 selector, which is by default on a base, has a small font size. And we'll boost that up for our first media query. So we have the work done for us in a snippets file. So if we go over there, lines 41 through 45 have a header H1 selector and we are improving the font size and adjusting the height and the line width properties. So we'll copy those and we'll go over to the practice file and paste those on line 43 just below the body selector for the first media query. Back in Firefox we'll refresh the page and we can see now we're providing a little bit larger font size for the top of the document. And we'll repeat that for the text that's inside the document. So back in the practice file, we see we have selectors for section, section H2, and section P, basically working with the margin padding and font sizes. So if we go over to the snippets area, we have some overrides for those starting on line 49 through 59 to override the padding font sizes and uh, even add some color changes. So we'll copy those over the practice file and we'll insert those at line 43 right after the body selector in our first media query. Now we'll go back over to Firefox and in our preset for 320 by 480 we'll do a refresh and we can see that the text has a larger size and has been changed to black. Let's repeat that for our second media query. So in the snippets file Select lines 63 through 73, includes some changes both for the header and the section selectors. And we'll copy those and we'll go back over to the practice file. And in the second media query on line 64, we can paste those. And keep in mind, these are overriding the previous media query. So we have some matches here. For example, the H2 is matching the font size and making an override. But also what's happening is the padding, for example, in the section selector is carrying forward into this media query. So it's progressively adding to our selectors as we go up the media query selectors. So back in Firefox, let's look at a responsive view for our media query. That would be 768 by 1024. And then we will refresh the page. And you can see the improvement with the new styles that we added for this breakpoint. Now let's move on to our last breakpoint for laptops and desktops. And let's do this in two steps. We'll first go to the snippets file and just do an adjustment for the header. 
So those are on line 77 through 81. Copy those and we'll add those to the media query for that size. And in Firefox, we'll select a width for that media query. I think we can use uh, 1280. And then we'll refresh the page. And we can see we increased the header font and a little bit of the spacing around it. So the last thing we'll do is prevent the paragraph text from unwrapping as we get to wider and wider widths. So just to revisit that, you can see it uh, wraps as we shrink. And as we get into our last media query, it keeps unwrapping and unwrapping and unwrapping until finally we might get on the large monitor a very unpleasant look of one long sentence. So this is less a technical item and more a design item based on the content expectations of our page. So we're going to make some assumptions. So if we go over to the snippets area, our last snippet is uh, for the section to set the maximum width of the section selector to 1200 pixels and adjust the padding slightly. And we copy that and we go over to our last media query on line 85. We'll paste that in. And so once we hit 1024, we will set a max width for the section. And in Firefox, we can try that out. So we'll refresh the page and you can see that we're already in that particular breakpoint and the text now is holding at 1200 pixels. If we move further in towards 1200 pixels, we'll start to see the wrapping occur. And if we move further out, it's unwrapping. And once we hit 1200, the unwrapping comes to an end. So it doesn't matter how wide the monitor might be, it should look fine. Now you have a basic framework for a mobile first responsive design. The actual width breakpoints will depend on your targets. For widths between the breakpoints, you use a flexible design approach. The CSS Media Query Selector is a great way to explore screen width detection, but they do make you concentrate all the CSS in one place. So in an upcoming segment, we'll look at breaking the CSS into separate external files for each breakpoint. Then we can apply the same media queries to the HTML link tag as an alternative to using the CSS Media Selector. Mm -hmm.